So if you're struggling as a junior dev, in this particular video, we will see best code practices and best design patterns that you must know in order to level up your experience and become a senior developer. So we're going to look at like different skill set that you need to acquire in order to like become a senior developer as well as the best code practices in order to make yourself a better developer and become a senior one. So what do we usually mean by a senior developer and actually what are the soft skills and like what the things are actually going to make it stand out in like compared to a junior developer and what is like the main difference between them. So you probably already know that in here for for example, for like a junior developer in here, like usually a junior developer is just like involving in, in writing some sample of code, not really that high level of code of like importance, but just like writing some sort of code and also um, junior developer is already like meant to learn along the way and, and actually fix more bugs than features or actually work on small features usually Usually alongside like other senior developers, which can actually just like, you know, gonna allow the junior developer to comprehend and actually get along the ecosystem they are actually working on and the code base and, you know, show them just like the way on that. And of course, for senior developers, actually, he's gonna take a lot more things on himself, like teamwork, he probably sometimes like becomes a lead, uh, he needs to like analyze the user needs, like do analytical thinking, uh, he needs to test the code, which usually a lot of like work and, and like, like test driven development and all that sort of stuff. Uh, he needs like critical thinking for problem solving, all that sort of stuff and document application process, troubleshooting. And obviously he needs like a really good programming experience and a really good programming like background depending on the project he's actually working on. So if you look up on Google, like for a React kind of like roadmap in order to become a senior developer and actually advance in the React ecosystem and learn and, and grow up in that ecosystem, you're going to find a lot of roadmaps. But in here, I found like the most comprehensive roadmaps that you could ever find. And like what what is actually the best? So there's actually two. And I usually like like this one here because it gives like a comprehensive way. So like for a person who must know in yellow, good to know, and kind of like reddish in here, or orange and possibilities in gray. Uh, so obviously you need HTML, CSS, JS basics for learning every act thing, then you need like general development skills, like a terminal, learning all the protocols, a browser, those kind of like stuff that you need and alongside like some design patterns or all this sort of stuff. Uh, you need like reacts, like if you want to just like go ahead and learn reacts, which is the point of ours in here. So to become a senior developer. So there are actually a couple of stuff We can go to styling CSS processors, you can go to like the CSS architecture, uh, you need to do async actions flawlessly as well, like type checkers, you need I, I really advise like types create and prop types. Uh, flow is good, but it's not really that like important compared to time screen and prop types. Um, what else? So you need like uh, helpers or form helpers like Formic or Final Form or Redux Form and API clients from like GraphQL and REST. I see GraphQL is very, very growing nowadays and definitely you need to like know that uh, for like, you know, just to step out of the junior circle uh, and, and like a REST API in here and how to use fetch and all this sort of stuff. So I, I actually there is actually a lot of stuff to comprehend in here. So obviously, the yellow one, you probably just like need to go ahead and learn those right away. Like those are like this basic standard stuff that you need or must know. And I would say the orange, obviously you need and must know as well for a senior developer. But for the grayish one, I would say just like they are optional, there are a couple of different stuff that you may need. But most likely, all you need to do is just like the, the yellowish and the orange for like, uh, you know, it's good to know. And obviously, as a senior developer, you would probably like need the good to know you need to like uh, to level up the bar compared to junior developers and to advance in this and know as much technologies as you could. And also what helps you like go out of the junior developer zone into like the senior developer zone and actually avoid all of the silly mistakes and the amateur stuff that junior developer usually does, especially mistakes and issues they like fall uh, into is actually following the best practices, especially in the universe of react and the ecosystem of react, and like the code best practices and, and how you can actually approach them. So for react components, as we all know, there is the new feature that got like the whole react system so excited about using react is actually hooks. So here is like how you define your components. So you should 
avoid completely at any cost using class components because they are very old and they actually cause a lot more problems and they have like a very kind of like you need to type a lot of code in order to get small things or small rendering of a, like a part of a UI uh, to be done so it's not really that practical so always avoid like class component for example in here this is what it takes to create a class component you need a constructor you need the super uh, you need to pass in props to super you need to extend react then eventually you get to the rendering part, which obviously most of the times that's what that's what you're actually gonna be needing, and then you just like return a render. Now, in the other hand, what you should replace that with is actually a function component, which is like the new awesome thing, and alongside hooks, it's just gonna make it a lot easier. So function components, simple as that. It's just a function, it takes props if you need it, then you can actually use props, obviously. Then all you need to do to render is actually return, and you're gonna be rendering like whatever you want. That is it. It's just that simple. And look how clean and simple the code is compared to the class components. And the other issue that most junior developers actually fall into is literally just using inline functions or inline arrow functions inside of the GSX or the rendering part. So for example, this is a bad approach because we have a button and H3 and whatever, and that button has an on-click event. Now, what the junior developer, what, what's actually like considered a bad practice is actually to declare and define your arrow function directly inside of like the GSX in here, which in that case, if you have like a long GSS rendering code and you need to put a lot of event listeners in here, that's gonna be very bad in the code code will look very, very messy. On the other hand, if you look into the best part of this in here, there's actually like no like inline functions or no inline arrow functions in here is to actually abstract that into another method that you just put inside of your function, which is like you can call it handle button click. And this can take, you know, just a regular function, you can even define a regular function, like instead of an arrow function in here, and you can do all the handling that you would do like on the top in here, the same thing. And all you need to do just like take that function and just put it into like the event listener in here. And that is it. And look, if you compare this clean code, that's super easy to read through compared to this one, this looks like a lot more complicated compared to this. So it's better to avoid like declaring those inline stuff and just like replace them with methods. The other thing that I see is actually a must to learn to become a senior developer and literally just like from 2022 and beyond is learning TypeScript and replacing JavaScript with TypeScript. So TypeScript is completely mandatory because it just gonna make your code and give it like superpowers and it's gonna make it super clean, super easy to read. And obviously it's gonna make you like working in a team a lot better with TypeScript. So for example, if you take this component in here without a TypeScript, which is a very bad approach. So you take like props in here and you can have like emails verified and user. Now you got the user, you know the user is actually an object, but you don't know exactly what the user is. You don't know what the type, you don't know what the properties that does exist inside of this user object. So like whenever you try to access in here, sometimes you have a mistake or a typo, and this is very bad to catch and, and very like lingering to actually find throughout the code. And it's quite bad. You don't know exactly what the e is email verified like property in here is, is it like a string? Is it a Boolean? It may seem like a Boolean in here, but sometimes you can't actually figure this out by yourself. The second part in here is actually where we're using TypeScript. So for example, TypeScript, you need to define interfaces, which are like, you know, objects, um, like object definitions or types of objects, and you give it like what this needs. For example, this is our props, so give it the props, and the prop is going to take an user, which is like it has its own interface or has its own type. If you look at it, it's going to take us to the typings, which we're putting in here, just like for the better folder structure. And we got like the interface user name, age, email, whatever we got. Now we've got user and got this one as well, we put in as a Boolean. Now if we look at the code below in here, we, we can easily know what's that. But if we hover like for using if yes code or any other IDE, you can know that oh, user is a type of an user, and easy email verified is a type of a Boolean. If you look at this, this is a type of string, and email is a type of string, even if I click, it's going to take me straight through that. And it's like, it's going to make the development experience a lot better and a lot more enjoyable compared to JavaScript. The other very most important thing is actually to only use camel case, which is like, you know, how you name your variables, your classes, your components, your functions and everything. So always, always in JavaScript, 
always specially react use camel casing instead of any, any other type of casing. For example, we've got snake casing in here, which uses an underscore between words, which is a very bad approach and you never want to use that. So this is actually all using like snake casing here for easy email verified, handle verification, and all of those. And as you can clearly see, makes the code look a little bit longer. Um, and here for camel casing, obviously, it's going to be the same thing, like handle verification, where you're just going to have a capital letter uh, between like separating every word and, and the other, which is going to make it look a lot easier, easier to read, a lot easier to read, and of course, easier to type as well. And on the other hand, if you really want to like experience and see how like senior developers and advanced developers are actually setting up their projects and having the folder structure, having the configuration and all the tools they are actually using inside of like their big projects and everything, I would really advise you to go ahead and use a boilerplate. There's many, many boilerplates out there, especially for React. So there's this like React boilerplate CLI template, which in my case, I've been using for years now, and it's so, so nice. And you can actually go in and set this up using the create React app directly without any issues, which is going to make it a lot easier. So this CRA has a lot of stuff. It has code conventions, it has best practices, it has best tools being used, and everything is configured for you. All you need to do is just go ahead and run the setup in here like we aren't create react app whatever and you can specify the template specify your application and that is it and you can read like about the features it has like typescript quick scaffolding static code analysis uh, seo there are like instant feedback next generation css for like post css and all other stuff it's amazing. Also, what makes you like a senior developer is actually what they know, and particularly what like the architecture and the particular design patterns they apply when like problem solving or writing code and, and like doing some like architectural uh, kind of like solutions for, for web apps and stuff, they all use that and they all keep in mind their like design patterns and best practices. So in this one, I got like two very most important websites I really learned from like in the past uh, a couple of years and I really, really enjoy those websites. Uh, the first one is called patterns.dev, which is a really awesome website in here. It's even like an ebook that you can go in and download and you can have it offline, but you can go like click get started and it can take you straight through into like patterns. You can see design patterns, rendering patterns and performance patterns. And what I really, really like about this website, it has all the code snippets and all the explanations around JavaScript which is so nice and as well around React, which is gonna make this perfect for you and for this particular video. So like you can go into like an introduction, what are like design patterns, maybe you wanna see the singleton pattern and all this stuff. Uh, maybe you, what you would really wanna go ahead and see like there is this, um, where is that? The render props pattern, which is a very important pattern in the React word where you can you know have a render props, and you can like receive props from the parent components into the child components and you can extract that. And it has all the explanation, it has that in code sandbox, you can run those through, you can edit them, very nice. The next one is, is called Toe of React, which is as well is very nice. It's like a 50 minute read and I always like keep this like in my reference list. And I always keep coming to this to learn more if I like forget something or anything. It's really nice. I really advise to go read through this. It has a very, very advanced stuff. And I really enjoy going through all this, like uh, maybe like you want to avoid nested ternary callbacks. And this is how you do it. It just shows you bad and good. It gives you like how to think as a senior developer or as an advanced developer into using this with React. So both of these websites are like golden websites. We really advise us to keep them like in a, your bookmarks or in your list in Notion and refer them every single time you need to know something new.